I'm starting this recording. I'm starting this recording, so it's on your clap. All right, here we go, gentlemen, in three, two, one. This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Spitballin' Podcast. Uh, we here at the Sloopcast are thrilled to finally be talking about some baseball with our new sponsors, the Spitballin' Podcast. Uh, we know that we give you some of the best football basketball coverage in the world of Ohio State basketball, but baseball is booming, and you have... You have now found your new MLB pod. Take a listen to the Spitballing Podcast. Be our very own, uh, by our very own, I can read, I'm an adult, by our very own Sloop Cat, Austin, uh, and his buddy Reed, who is a lifetime baseball fan. Just like here, there will be some shenanigans, but there will also be unbiased MLB coverage. Oh, we aren't unbiased. I, I don't know if you meant to include that part, Austin, in the just like here, because we're biased as hell. Um, coverage from someone uh, who's grown up around the game, as well as someone who is brand new to the game. Uh, that is the Spitballing Podcast, available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and basically all of, if you're, whatever platform you're listening to this podcast on, I'm sure you can also find it on the Spit, I'm sure you can find the Spitballing Podcast also on this platform. So uh, there you go, just uh, spitballing, all one word, no G at the end, Spitballing Podcast. And if, you want your, and if you want your very own ad, hit us up in the Discord. Or email. Be a Sloop Cat, be, be, become a Patreon, and we'll give you more information. <laughs> yeah. In all seriousness, in all, in all seriousness now that, now that um, spring camp's up and coming, and if our, if our wasteland was anything like last year's wasteland where we didn't have a wasteland just all sorts of information coming after spring camp join us on the discord it's free you get you get to um you get a lot of the different channels just to talk about football basketball other sports whatever it may be it's a it's a, it's a big chat feature and if you want to talk about Iowa state or whatever come come check us out just search for sloopcast in discord there you go. All right, Kyle, let's get this boat rowing. No. No. Didn't like that. But let's just let's get started. Let's get started. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the sloop cast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. How are you doing today? Um, tired. I'm tired, but that's yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. me too. Me too. I've, I've played some played some kickball earlier today. Got got a little adrenaline going here. I'm good. It has been my good. first day in which I haven't worked in like 14 days. So, <laughs> yay me! But yeah, um, and of course I proceeded to just work around the house the entire time. So, you know, but whatever, we're talking about football now, Kyle, let's get to the point. People are listening. They're like, Jared and Kyle get to the point. Okay. Let's get to the point. All right. Uh, spring camp. Yeah. Adulting is bad. All right, Kyle spring camp. Um, we got some press time with, uh, the, the coaching staff this week. Um, uh, last week we did offense on Monday and defense on Tuesday. Um, Let's let's swap it. Let's start with defense. Uh, today is today is Monday after all. Let's start with the defense. Uh, let's go over some of the things uh, Coach Knowles had to say in his press conference. I tell you what, I, I know I've listened to Note before going to what he what he says. I tell you what, just listening to Knowles more and more, man, yeah. it just makes me really appreciate him being at Ohio State right now. Yeah, dude, dude knows his X's and O's. Dude sounds like he should be a head coach somewhere. Well, that um also he you it really comes across how much of a 
well, unlike me, an effective communicator, and he is like he 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 does just feel like um he feels like a teacher. He absolutely just like if you walked into like sophomore world history class and Jim Knowles was standing there, he'd feel right in place. Like you can just tell that the man, if nothing else, <laughs> grandfather energy, uh, gangland says. Um, but yeah, he just he feels like a total teacher. Uh, he's I I am quickly understanding why and how he is effective. And he is filling me with confidence with this defense um, as far as the what we're going to get out of the defense this year and, and it taking a step forward. Yeah, let's 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 jump in, into it right now here. So uh, no, no was talked for about 30 minutes to um, to few few people on the um, Ohio State beat writers here. Uh, so picking a few things out here. Uh, first off, Jared, um, uh, in order to make assessments on guys like Kate Stover, you need repetitions. Um, also says Tommy Eichenberg has been a great leader. He says, I really like what I've seen out of Tommy. He's mastering the defense quickly and making plays. Now, I know Eichenberg hasn't been one of the most popular guys last year. Right. People have but, unfairly taken their dislike. Yes, uh, Gangland being one of them as he drops an Eichen Borland in the chat. Um People, they're, they're, they're disliked for tough Borland, and then they just sort of copied and pasted it onto Tommy Eichenberg. And it's not fair. Uh, I, I think now I'm not, I'm not saying that Tommy Eichenberg's the best athlete in the linebacker room. He's not, but he's, he's much more athletic in my opinion than, than tough Borland. And let's just go watch, rewatch the Rose Bowl. Go rewatch the Rose Bowl and see how well he played. Better or worse than Pete Warner, though? Different player. Different player than Pete Warner. Um, I think if Pete Warner were in this defense, he would be getting looks at the, the, the cover linebacker or the covers, whatever, whatever we're calling the positions now. Um, but they're, they're, they're different players as far as that goes. Um, the, yeah, uh, I'm just saying, give, give Tommy Eckenberg a second chance. That's all I'm yeah. saying. Uh, give all of the linebackers a second chance. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. All right. Let's <laughs> see here. Sticking, <laughs> sticking with the linebackers no. here. Uh, talking about chip. Um, Noel says he's, I've seen nothing but good things out of Chip. Uh, he likes recruiting offensive guys to play linebackers because they just have a feel. Converted running backs have an understanding of where the ball is going. It could be a great advantage to have linebackers who have played running back. They understand where the ball is going to go. They understand protections. Yeah. Uh, whether it be Chip Trainum or Steel Chambers, who he's obviously also referring to here. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's not, it's not like the plan, right? Like, I, I don't think Jim Knowles is walking into... Austin says Teague should have been a linebacker. I'd have watched that. Um, I, I, I <laughs> I'd have liked to have seen it. Dude's huge and he's fast. Um, I, but, you know, it takes more than that. Uh, dude's, dude's chiseled as hell right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, um, I know, I know Coach Day mentioned about the linebackers where I think somebody was asked about the amount of linebackers Ohio State has or if that's going to be an issue and where, where, and where are they going to be playing at and Right now, day, day, and I think Noah's to a degree as well, just kind of getting to feel what everybody's strengths are and finding out right. which position is going to be best. Because this is this is a totally different defense. It's a four-two-five, essentially four-two-five defense where sort of, that, sort of, sort of not, but uh, well, yeah, just finding finding out finding out who are who has what strengths and where they, how that's going to be put at. 
you have a defensive end who's also sort of a linebacker and you have a safety who's also sort of a linebacker. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's, it is, yeah. it is what it is. It's like you have hybrid players everywhere, including the, uh, don't call it the Leo anymore. We're calling it the Jack now. Uh, they're not calling it the Leo anymore. It's a Jack. Uh, something about the Leo being the king of the jungle and they haven't earned that yet or something. I, I, I am really kind of over giving every position uh, a fancy name. I'm, I'm over it. I, I'm yeah. very, very over it. Um, but uh, he said uh, they, they just put in the uh, they just put in the Jack uh, this week. Um, the of course, it would be last week for, for most of you listening to this. Um, a bunch of good. Uh, they had a bunch of guys trying it out, including Jack Sawyer, uh, Mitchell Melton. Um, again, here's another guy who's changed positions in Melton. Um, that being said, uh, Neo Teote and Reed Carrico uh, are both getting work at the Sam. Now, we had been told at one point that there was not going to be a Sam anymore. Like, there were, we aren't going to do three. We aren't going to do three linebackers anymore. We don't have a Sam anymore. That's not a thing we do. I, well, I, I think um, you still gotta have. I still think you have to identify who who's gonna be in that position because you're you're going to have eventually four three, um, four defense. Uh, by the way, before I get past it, the Jack pack the the pa- I don't want to call it the Jack package, but it's the Jet package. That's where the Jack plays apparently, but. Uh, to go back to the Sam, he's uh, Noel says they did not do a lot of Sam linebacker at Oklahoma State. Um, one of the reasons was you didn't see a lot of 12 personnel at Except Oklahoma State or in the Big 12, rather. And he says, Except even when, when you, and by Purdue. the way, uh, a 12 personnel for anyone who does not know, uh, that is when you have two tight ends on the field. So just for anyone not aware of that, that's what that means. Um, just don't say so, anybody in the big 10 West. Right. So he, he basically <laughs> says, and even when the big 12, uh, played in a 12 personnel, it never really was an actual 12 personnel. Cause one of the tight ends would actually be a wide receiver. Um, so he says essentially that they're going to have more three tight end or excuse me three linebacker sets, including the Sam linebacker at Ohio state than they ever did at Oklahoma state because the competition and the style of the big 12, or excuse me, the big 10 cannot talk today uh, necessitates it. Yeah. Uh, another guy, another guy that Noah's really likes is uh, Mitchell Milton. He said that he's been very impressive, showed up very well um, at the Jack uh, he said he's been a guy who's jumped out at me. Um, uh, let's see. Jared already mentioned about Pallier um, looking good at the Jack Sam position. Reed also looking good at the Sam uh, as well, too. But they're saying the Jack plays the Jack plays I, a lot in the Jet package. I, I said that. I, I was jumping around between yes. a few of the quotes there. Um, he... Uh, speaks on Tyleek Williams, uh, says he absolutely loves what uh, Tyleek is doing. He says he jumps off of the film. Um, The defensive line has been impressive across the board. Um, Knowles said at one point, I don't know if I have it in the notes here or not, but basically he was asked like, hey, what's been the most impressive group for you? And it's just been like the defensive line. Now, here's the thing. I have to think that he doesn't, he didn't have low expectations for the defensive line coming in. Um, man, it, the defensive line is room. We all, we talk a lot and for good reason, how stacked the wide receiver room is right now. The defensive line room is absolutely stacked right now. And like you could realistically just play sophomores on the defensive line between you know, guys who we know, Jack Sawyer and JTT and Tyleek Williams. But then, like, add Mike Hall into that uh, kid out of Pickerington, who I think is going to have an absolutely enormous sophomore year this year. Like, that's, you know, I, uh, Austin asked a couple weeks ago, like, you know, 
who you think the breakout player is going to be? Um, and I didn't think of saying it at the time. Uh, the answer I probably should have said was my call. Uh, I think he's going to have an absolutely bonkers year. Uh, let's see here. I'm looking at just trying to go through the questions here. See if there's anything else about the defensive line or linebackers. Uh, let's see here. A lot. There, there's, uh, there, there's a lot. Yeah, there, there is. <laughs> uh, he does talk about JTT. Um, saying he has great feet, excellent takeoff. Reactions are excellent. We saw this last year. Uh, so I'm play a zone read the other day, and he was able to play both the dive and the quarterback for a loss of yards. Says he's really liked everything he's seen so far. I think he can definitely be a dominant player. Yeah, and you know, newsflash, JTT is good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like, but it, it, it's, it, it got to the point, and like, if you actually listen to the press conference to the point where he was like gushing. So, yeah. But uh, and, and talking I'm, about... I'm, I'm, I'm really curious to see how Sawyer is going to do this year. A lot of the attention kind of went on J well on Sawyer in the spring camp. And then JTT came in right. and then it was kind of all him and Sawyer kind of, kind of wasn't given as much attention, but now that he's gained 30 pounds yeah. this off season. Well, Tyler Williams started stealing a lot of that attention as well. Yeah. I'm, I'm really curious to see, see how Sawyer makes a name for himself in um, this year. Yeah. Um, so f talking about last year's freshman, let's talk a bit about this year's freshman. Two of the guys uh, everyone has their eyes on right now, CJ Hicks and Gabe Powers. The the issues at linebacker over the past few years are well documented, although I've said it before and I'll say it again right now. I think a lot of those issues to me have been scheme based and not talent based. And I think this year will will help to prove that. Uh, but yeah, ski man coaching gang, Lynn. Um, that being said, uh, we're still very excited. Two amazing linebackers came in this recruiting class. One of them, CJ Hicks. Uh, uh, he is, uh, Noel says that he shows a lot of quickness uh, in short spaces. He has amazing feet um, and he can break on the ball. Gabe powers is quiet, but he gets better every day. He is a serious student of the game. His trajectory has been completely upward. He wants to learn and grow. He takes the classroom to the field. It's almost like Kyle. It's almost like he's the son of a coach. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. Like maybe I'm just making that up <laughs> or maybe he literally played for his dad in high school. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, let's that see here. All right. What was that? I said my chair keeps sagging. Uh, oh. <laughs> so freshman, uh, probably want to go ahead and bring up Sonny Styles as well. Uh, of course, he reclassified. So he's in a year early. Uh, I don't I don't expect a ton from Sonny Styles this particular season. I, I think we look at Sonny Styles as probably more of a next year guy. Um, whereas I do think CJ Hicks, probably, especially we can see a lot this year. Gabe Powers, uh, maybe is a late game guy. I think we could, or a special teams guy. I think we can see a lot of Gabe Powers. Sonny Styles, you know, it, it, it's always tough when the, when a, when a guy reclassifies, but for right now, they're starting him at safety. Um, he's, uh, Noel says they're going to give him a shot there first and see what he can do. I personally think Sonny Styles is specialty built to take on that bandit bullet, whatever role. Uh, yes. Yeah, Sonny styles is, um, I, I, I believe so. I don't know. I don't, I believe he's still in, in high school. Uh, but Knowles was asked about Sonny styles. Yeah. Yes. Gangland. He, he, you're correct. He's not a camp, but someone asked. So Knowles answered. <laughs> I thought this was um, really interesting from from Knowles here. <clears throat> um, talking about seven on sevens, um, I think Jared and I just historically have always not been been big fans of seven on sevens because it 
there's so much more when you got an actual defensive line coming at you. Sure. Uh, so no, no one talks about, about seven on sevens can be extremely frustrating at times, but does talk about how impressive CJ Stroud is. Goes on to say, he remembers when he was at Ole Miss with Eli Manning, felt like he was the same way, can diagnose all the defense, defense's deceptions, does a great job getting rid of the ball because there is always a hole. Stroud told him today that he likes what the defense is doing because it challenges him every day. Yeah, um, there was a lot of gushing in this particular press conference over C.J. Stroud. Um, I, <laughs> hey, I, you know, I'm, I'm just saying it. He's going to win the Heisman this year. He's going to win the Heisman this year. No bias. C.J. Stroud is going to win the Heisman this year. No bias or anything, right? I, I, I'm, I'm, I. If the offensive line can be as good as it's capable of being and give him the time he needs, C.J. Stroud will win the Heisman this year. Well, let's see. Favorites right now. We well, have. Well, Kyle, let, let's tease that and let me do an ad read. Okay. All right. Um, now, Austin just gave me the one ad read to read. I, should I just read it again? I'll just read it again. Um, that that or you could talk about our about our discord and how to become a patreon and all the benefits no the uh, austin paid for for this i have to read austin's all right uh this episode is still brought to you by the spitballing podcast uh we here at the Sloopcast are thrilled to finally be taking uh talking some baseball with our new sponsors the spitballing podcast we know that we give you some of the best football and basketball coverage in the world for Ohio State, but baseball is booming, and you now have found your new favorite MLB pod. Take a listen to the Spitballing Podcast uh, with our very own Sloop Cat, Austin, uh, as well as his buddy, Reed. Uh, they are lifetime baseball fans. Just like here, there will be shenanigans, but there will also be unbiased MLB coverage from someone who has grown up around the game, as well as someone who is brand new to the game. That is the Spitballing Podcast, available on Spotify, Apple Podcast, and probably wherever you're listening to this right now, you can probably also find it there. All right. Uh, Kyle, uh, well, you know what? The Spitballing Podcast, uh, that is Spitballing, one word, no G at the end. Spitballing. All right. Ad read done. Did you find those Heisman odds? I did. Who's winning? I had them I had them ready. Uh, uh, let's see. From, from a few places, I think on average here, Bryce Young is the favorite right now, followed by C.J. Stroud, then Caleb Williams, who's now out at... Um, USC. And then for some reason, well, I can understand the running back out of Texas, um, Robinson, absolutely a stud running back there. But for some reason, Quinn Ewers? Quinn Ewers there as well. And then right right there tied with Quinn Ewers is uh, Trevion Henderson. Oh, sorry. Uh, just real quick, who, who are the top like three? Uh, that'd be Bryce Young, CJ Stroud, and Caleb Williams. I can, yeah. I mean, I I think we're 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 moving very quickly on Caleb Williams. Yeah, there you go. I put that in the in the chat there for your visual. All right, Kyle. We need to move through the rest of this press conference um, a little bit quickly, sure. so we still have time for Ask Sloopcast questions at the end. Sure thing. Um, let's talk about the defensive backs here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, one thing we've talked about Knowles in the in this package that he's really wanting to do with defense is having three safeties. Uh, talks about having three safeties caught his eye that he can throw out there every day. Uh, says he loves uh, Hickman. Thinks he's a great piece in the middle there to run the show back there. Court Williams is an excellent leader. We'll continue to look at him regarding which packages suit him best. They they need to get better at covering receivers. The nickel is in good hands with McAllister and Martinez. And now Cavazos is working there. He also mentioned about Josh Proctor um, saying that we need him. We want him. And he's what we want at safety. 
Gangland just asked us in the live chat, what happens with Ransom in this defense? Um, does does the the cover safe the nickel the cover safety I I think is is probably where I see him. Uh, but as you're well aware, he's not at or he's not active in spring camp right now. Yep. I'm getting worried about transfer if Court steps up. I think Court's more in the bandit role. But I don't know. It's um. I see, I, I see, I see court is like the first backup to Ronnie Hickman. Um, the nickel is in good hands with Tanner McAllister, Cameron Martinez and legend Cavazos working in there. So those are a lot of corners there in the, you know, a lot of former corners anyway, uh, in that spot, the, I think they're still figuring it out and like, we don't necessarily because they keep the you know exactly what spots doing what and whatnot. Um, I the the question I think starts to become uh, with ransom in particular is is he rangy enough to be playing the deep safety spot, and also like that's Proctor's spot, right? So is he maybe the first backup to Proctor in the like in the deep safety? That's, you know, that that's what we still need to see. Uh, and like I said, we, we, we really just sort of need to get a better feel for exactly what these new safety positions are and what they're expected to be. Um, again, we, we do know at this point that the bandit is, a, again, like essentially the bullet, right? It's sort of the run stopping hybrid linebacker safety. And then there's the nickel, which is the cover safety, right? So uh, that much, I think we're figuring out and is evident by the fact that again, Cameron Martinez was recruited to be a cornerback legend Cavazos, a cornerback recruited to be a cornerback. So we see like these corners in this new, like nickel safety role, which again, like this defense is made up of hybrids. The nickel safety role is like a, a safety cornerback. People freaking out about three safeties. Okay, but one of them's part linebacker and the other one's part cornerback. It's fine. You know what I mean? Like it's just a bunch of hybrids. That's all it is. Like we we don't gotta freak out about the the, the new positions that much. Yeah. All right. Uh anything else here, Jared? I know we kind of bounced around a lot here. Um I think uh, one they, thing he mentioned one one thing he mentioned about the jack position, he said um, if a defensive end is supremely talented, like like a Bosa or Young, uh, Chase Young, you don't mess with them by putting them in a jack. It might be fun, but you don't mess with what they do best. So pretty much I think that kind of puts out having tr having JTT or Sawyer trying to play the jack, possibly. Yeah, except that he very deliberately said <laughs> that both of those guys are getting time at jack. Listen, they aren't Chase Young or Bosa yet. Is that is that where we want them to be? Yes. Is that where they are currently? No. Um, and by the way, I don't think that's what JTT will be. I feel like JTT is more of a... Um, oh, I'm blanking on his name. Someone help me out here. He played defensive end opposite Joey Bosa. Someone help me out here. I can't think of his name. You're asking me to remember Jared. No, not Noah Spence. <laughs> this this guy actually played no. for Ohio State. <laughs> not Jalen Holmes. Holmes. So what'd you say? No, just repeating what repeating what Gangland said there. Hubbard? No, it, it was it was after Hubbard. Taekwon Lewis. Taekwon Thank Lewis. You, Gangland. Yes. Yes. Taekwon Lewis. I feel like stylistically he's more of a Taekwon Lewis. Um now, I think he has a much higher ceiling than Taekwon Lewis, but I think that that's, that's the model, I think, for JTT. Mm -hmm. um, it's, yeah, I, I think we're good as far as the press conference goes. Um, All right, let's, let's go ahead and jump into some questions then. Yeah, let's do that. All right, let's see. Austin Formation, Jared, I'm going to have you remember some football movies here. 
Well, he says, is Blind Side a top three football movie? Um, no. I, listen, I, the Blind Side was fine. I, I actually mostly find it completely, like, I, it's forgettable. Like, I, I saw it, and I honestly don't remember much about it. Like, I don't know. It's, it's one of the, and it's, it's also one of those things where, like, it, it, had all this buzz and you sort of expect it like it was supposed to be this amazing thing. And then you watch it and like your expectations were so high that by the time I ended well, up seeing it, it was just sort of fine. Maybe so I would what is it your, more if the expectations were lower. So what is your top three then? Football movies. Mm -hmm. I don't really like football movies. They they're always very bad at football. <laughs> I never noticed that like they like, most football like, movies have a complete lack of understanding like, of like, like what a, football like a certain, is like a certain movie in, in the early 90s about some football program in Indiana I don't even know what you're talking about exactly <laughs> I mean I, I enjoyed Friday Night Lights Friday Night Lights was okay. good okay uh, Friday Night yeah. Lights remember the Titans remember the Titans Yep, that's a good um, one. Those, those are those are those definitely are good. up there. Um, I tell you what, it's a stupid movie, and it's a real stupid movie, but I still enjoyed it. And of course, I, it's been probably uh, over a decade since I've seen it, so maybe I'm wrong. Uh, but unnecessary roughness is is a fun time. So if you're looking so for so is the replacements. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Stuart is right. Or that the that's the giant. That's the third one. That that's the, the third. Giant. Those are the three football movies. Stuart Stuart with just like the we we passed the ball to Stuart. He was wide open behind the arc and then he drained it. That's what that was, Stuart. <laughs> yeah, that that's the third baseball movie. All right. Um, moving on here, we have who keeps changing his name baseball? here, but. Football. Um, who keeps who keeps uh, changing his name here? He is he goes now by Odin's Wrath, aka or Nomad. Nomad. Yeah. Nomad. Uh, how high will expectations be out of spring camp? Big Ten, CFP, Natty. Well, expectations is every year is national championship. That's that's it's... the expectations every year. You're at Ohio State. That that is the expectation. But I I honestly. When in doubt, pick the quarterback. Pick the <laughs> I don't know if anyone has a better. I don't know if anyone's better than CJ Stroud. Mm -hmm. I really don't uh, know if anyone's better than CJ Stroud. Yeah, uh, it's, how much it's, will it is to me. The defense will be good enough. How good can help determine if they win the national title. But. The. Offensive line, if like if the offensive line can be what we need it to be, if it can be very good, doesn't even have to be great. If the offensive line can be very good, if the offensive line can meet the expectations and the defense can be above average, I, I'm only asking for above average. This team's going to the national title. Uh, he also wants to ask how much how much will we know about the starters for the offensive line after April sixteenth? I think we kind of know. Yeah, um, Kyle, you want to copy and paste that one into our offensive episode? Sure, sure. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. But we'll answer that one in um, uh, Tuesday's episode. Here. Kevin Wilson answers that one for us in Tuesday's episode. Yeah. Uh, let's see. How much rum will will Gangland drink at the Sloop Cats meetup? Well, it, it's, a, it's it's in a public space, so I mean, I guess that just depends upon how much money he has. <laughs> well, he says not more than one. There you go. Uh, over under for the spring game audience at seventy five thousand. Um, really, under. I'm going to go under just because it's Easter What what it is Easter and then weather plays a lot into it. So if it's colder or if it's rainy, yeah, you're 
you're not going to get many people out there. Well, I think that's one of the reasons why Ohio State has such a late spring game is because like the difference between like the second Saturday in April in Ohio and the third Saturday in April in Ohio can make a huge difference as far as temperature. Um, people are excited, Gangland, but the Easter thing, I think, is really going to throw a wrench in the attendance. All right. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Austin here. What what player this spring is going to be the, oh, I forgot he was on the team guy. The, I forgot who was on the team guy. Um, hmm. Ty Hamilton? Uh, what about Cage? Uh, potentially Cage. I mean, there's also, uh, Austin says for the casual fan, obviously we all know them. And, okay, and then Gangland said what I was about to say, uh, Teron Vincent. Like, Teron Vincent's too obvious an answer for probably anyone who bothers to listen to an Ohio State podcast. Uh, that's too obvious of an answer for us. Um, but for a casual fan, Teron Vincent, I think, is uh, potentially that guy. What about Hooker? Who? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, let's uh, see. Um, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Austin says uh, Bob's his answer. Well, Austin, I think we're also I was I was sticking to the defense. Kyle, can we also paste that question and we answer it again for the offense on the Tuesday episode? Let's see. We'll answer that second question from Austin talks about um, receivers here. Um, I, I don't know how to answer this one because it's baseball. It says, who is currently the Buckeye on the football team? Who would be the best baseball player? Um, I, I have no idea. I'm going to say Kyle McCord. I, I I just assume he could probably pitch. Like if he wanted to pitch, he probably could pitch. He's probably the strongest. I I have been told he's the strongest arm on the team. All right. And last question here. If this Buckeyes team has a breakfast item, what breakfast item would they be? So, uh, well, I mean, it's, it's the, the answer is boring, but it's, it's like a chocolate chip pancake with like a peanut butter syrup. Cause that's just what we do in central Ohio. We, we, we make something chocolate and peanut butter and we call it Buckeye flavored. That's how we roll. I got, I got one last minute one from Stuart here. Cause we always love a um, big guy touchdown. He says here, sure. which big, which big body not named Dewan Jones. Okay. Would you love to see dancing in the end zone? AKA like a, bb landers yeah um tyleek williams yeah i, I think is, williams, yep. <laughs> uh yeah hamilton i honestly austin i probably would have picked a defensive guy anyway because I don't, I just don't feel like I would have picked the offensive lineman to get a touchdown. Although, like yeah. I, I know tackle eligibles are are a thing, um, but I probably was going to, I was probably going to pick a defensive guy anyway for that question. All right, Jared, that's all the questions we have for today's episode. Cool, cool. Um, Donovan Jackson, buddy. There's no such thing as a guard eligible. He's covered. Yeah, that's it. That's the end of the episode. Hey, hey Austin, since this was your first uh, sponsored episode, Zen Mikowski. Hey, you know, maybe. Um, Austin, since this is your first ever sponsored episode, if you want to uh, request some music, please go ahead and do that while we uh, finish things up here. Um, that's it. That's the end of today's podcast. As Kyle brought up, um, earlier, uh, come, come hang out in the discord server, discord.thesloopcast.com. Um, we're a less toxic alternative to social media. Cause we, we, we keep our shit in line. We have, a, we have a, we have a crew of moderators. Most of them are currently in the chat right now. Um, and, and we, we, we help keep things not toxic. Um, 
quick story time on that. We once had a guy pop in uh, during an Ohio State game. He said something shitty about a player. And one of our mods basically said, hey, uh, be sure to read the rules. You're not allowed to, like, attack players like that here. Like, we don't, you know, we, we the, 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 the phrase we have here is, like, critique, but don't be a belligerent asshole. <laughs> you know, criticize, don't be an asshole. You know, that's the line. And then he goes, what the hell? I can't shit talk players? No, you can't. And then someone banned him. <laughs> I think it was a nomad. Uh, point to, and by the way, he also like called us names for 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 having those rules, right? Um, and for anyone who still thinks that that's a bad policy, and we've had we've boot, that's probably the number one reason we've booted people uh, from the server. Um, I, I invite you to uh, reevaluate that, especially in light of recent mental health awareness that we're having in the Ohio State football program right now. There's a very specific reason why we don't allow such behavior. And like, there's no players in our Discord server. They'd never see it. But I, I won't foster that shit. You know what I mean? Like, point is, is that come hang out in our Discord server because uh, Twitter and most message boards are toxic as hell, and we aren't. All right, um, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? A couple of things real quick here. Uh, not football related, basketball. Even though what? Buckeye, Buckeye bas basketball is over. So some news here. Uh, we got a transfer... Coming to Ohio State, uh, we have Tanner Holden, who is a guard out of Wright State. Uh, really good player. Um, has two years of eligibility left uh, this year or this past year. He averaged over 20 points per game, seven rebounds, over two and a half assists per game. Definitely a guy that Ohio State will love to have with a number of um, key players um, not returning for next year. Uh, yeah, Gangland instant says, starter Gangland. instant starter um especially if brenham leaves yeah and then if last brenham, thing if, yeah because i i feel like that that's if brenham leaves and he probably will yeah no i i, I get it gangland he's maintaining his eligibility but he he, he he's gone um th this is the guy that fills in for brenham i think this is your brenham replacement right here yeah um the last one here jared uh, former Buckeyes head coach Thad Mata returning to coach again here. Yeah, this time this time going to Butler. So just foot flopping. <laughs> yeah, good for him. I'm happy. But, yeah, yeah. I ho I hope for the best. I hope that he's healthy enough. He's able to coach again here. But yeah, happy happy for him. I know there's a he, lot. He could of, always coach. I hope he's able to recruit. Yeah, there's. Well, he can recruit. It was just the last couple of years and yes that is why people why Ohio State got rid of him is because of he couldn't he struggled recruiting the last couple of years and the performance was not how it was in the past it was a quote-unquote performance um oh. firing well no it was a re retirement <laughs> he, he wasn't fired he was retired but yeah all right uh anything else Kyle no, nope. all good here. That's it. All right. Uh, I asked Austin to recommend uh, what song to play at the end. And he said, Giant Conspiracy by Playing to Vapors. Now, you might be wondering, hey, Jared, isn't this your third episode in a row playing Playing to Vapors? And yeah, fight me about it. If you don't like <laughs> it, become a Patreon and make a suggestion. <laughs> if you don't like it, watch us on YouTube because we can't use music there. <laughs> all right. Uh, so with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Playing to Vapors. <laughs>